I have had the privilege of knowing Simit before it became Simit from the early days of the Rockefeller Foundation's program in Mexico. I heard Norman Borlaug and John Niederhauser at a meeting at Madison, Wisconsin in 1953. Uh, after the CGIR was for, for formed, the first institution was ERI, the second one was CIMIT, uh, which, was, which was a development of the earlier program started under the Rockefeller Foundation grant. Dr. Norman Borlaug and his colleagues started uh, wheat breeding with very wide adaptation. And above all, Norman Borlaug and his colleagues were very generous in sharing their material with all over the world. In India, we received a lot of material uh, which had earlier been tested in Pakistan and uh, that led to the wheat revolution in India. Uh, between 1964 and 68, wheat production increased by an order which was greater than the previous 4,000 years. 4,000 years of history was were condensed in four years. What Simit has shown is in three directions. One is technology is the prime mover of change, so that we must emphasize on technology, which is sort of scale neutral and which uh, can be adapted by farmers having different sizes of holdings, not only the big farmers, but the smaller farmers, the resource poor farmers can all add. The second area was the services which are needed by farmers. And thirdly, public policy became important because scientists can help in improving the yield potential of the plant. It is, uh, whether the potential is realized or not will depend on public policy, particularly uh, if the economics of farming. CIMIT therefore has made contribution in the, all the three areas, packages of technology, packages of services, and packages of public policies. And uh, it has attracted scholars from all over the world. Human resource development has been one of its very important contributions because most of the senior wheat and maize scientists working in developing countries have had at some time or the other exposure to CIMIT philosophy, CIMIT methodology, and CIMIT's own approach to improving yield and productivity. So CIMIT has been able to bring brains from all over the world, encourage developing country scientists, and instill the confidence that we can overcome. And uh, what I've always appreciated is the broad outlook of the organization, its, uh, its ability to share. These are days of intellectual property rights, but CIMIT scientists used to share their material, their knowledge, without any cost at all. And the only motivation was, we must abolish hunger. We must have everyone enough food for a healthy and productive life. Assuring everyone in the developing country an opportunity for a productive and healthy life has been a goal of CIMIT, and it must be the goal of all of us here. Agriculture uh, needs eternal vigilance. Eternal vigilance in terms of economics, eternal vigilance in terms of pests and diseases. On the occasion of the 50th anniversary, we should rededicate ourselves to the principles which have guided CIMIT during the last 50 years. There may be some changes here and there, but the fact remains it's a human-centered approach, it's a farmer-centric approach, and it's a woman-centric approach. It recognizes uh, all, in spite of gender, in types of religion, in, in, in type of color, and so on. And on this day, we salute the builders, the founders and builders of CIMIT, all of those who are present here, they salute them because they have been the saviors of world food security, of uh, the fate of millions of farmers all over the world, and shown new methods of production, which can, what I call evergreen revolution, increase in productivity in perpetuity without ecological harm. I wish CIMIT continued success in spreading the seeds of evergreen revolution everywhere.